Now, I understand you're involved in an initiative called ACPD, Accelerating Clinical Trials in Parkinson's Disease. Can you talk a bit about what that program is, when it started, how, how people can get involved and so on? So this is a project that's been funded by the Edwin J. Safra Foundation, and that they've given us some financial support to set up this, this complicated platform trial. For us to be successful, it does require a lot of organisation and a lot of input from different stakeholders. What we want to do is to, to set up a platform where we can compare multiple drugs against a single placebo arm and those drugs which look the most effective can continue all the way from phase two to, to a phase three efficacy evaluation without the stop start processes that, that are traditionally seen and if a drug looks like it's no good then recruitment to that arm stops and it's replaced by, by the next most exciting candidate and so we have a, a continued output of results some of which will be negative and then we can move on but hopefully we'll have some positive results that can then um, become standard of care and people can um, use those in the placebo arm and new drugs can be compared against that standard of care so it's it's an ongoing process and because it's complicated we need to take the views of all the stakeholders on board so this includes people with parkinson's disease their views about which drugs and how they're measured and what their, their major symptoms that they need to, to, to um, be impacted on. So how, how um, a drug is judged in terms of its safety and efficacy. We need to think about um, what the logistics, about how patients are assessed, how the detail and the time and effort and the resources need to make those assessments, how long those assessments take, how often they're performed and over what time scale. And we need to think about the, the sustainability of, of the, the project, because it may be that it takes one, three years to assess one drug, um, but we, we, we might get three, four drugs tested over that three year period, but then we can replace for the next three years and the three years after that. So there, there are decades of assessments and resources that, that might be needed to, to maintain this. And so we have to make sure that we have the, the, the right funding and plans so, so th th this is, is going to work and is acceptable to the, the major funders for, for clinical trial research in Parkinson's disease. The final goal is to make sure that our data shows or convinces the regulatory authorities that the, and the drug works and then should be made available to people with Parkinson's as a routine um, therapy. And so all of these competing problems need to be aligned and then we can um, set the trial off and running and um, proper. If so everything goes well, when will you start recruiting people to participate in trials? So the plan is to, that we have the protocol written, we have the funding applications um, all um, um, considered and funding awarded. We have permissions in place so we could start recruiting um, in the middle of 2024, so perhaps June 2024. And we'll, we'll make sure that all the, the, the major players are aware of, of this project en route, the patients that, that are helping us in the planning of the project, the charities that are involved, and the funders and regulatory authorities, um, th th there's all sufficient awareness. So we hit the ground running, and it's not, it's not a, a new announcement in June 2024. It's a project that's been um, being built and anticipated, you know, so we can hit the ground running and recruit quickly and easily to, to, to sites. So I have PD, how can I get involved in, in participating in this programme? So of course we, we, we need people with Parkinson's disease to give us their views on the process in its design and in its conception. And so we have a, a working group of people who are um, kindly giving their time in order to, to give us feedback on all the decisions and to steer us in, in, in the, the direction which is most important to them. And then we have a, um, a wider group of, of, of patients with Parkinson's disease who we can contact if there are issues or decisions that, 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 that need a, a broader input. And that might be from different um, ethnicities, different ages, different genders. And so, so we take into account um, the, the broader population of patients with Parkinson's disease. Um, we then, of course, will need people who are interested and willing to, to um, engage in clinical trial research, to, to sign up, 
to um, be prepared to be randomized to, to one of um, any number of arms. And then of course, that, that includes um, being exposed to placebo for perhaps an extended period. And so all of these implications and logistics are, are being discussed as part of the setup. Final question. Where can I go to find out more information about ActPD? So we've got a website, so ejsactpd.com. Um, th there's some video information there, and it, it, people can, can watch those videos, and, and there's, there's a lot of information, or click on various links to find out about the different working groups that are involved. Um, so it's a, a dynamic resource, so we, we're changing the, the website and updating it as, as we make more decisions um, to keep people informed. Before they're approved, new drugs go through a rigorous process to demonstrate safety and effectiveness. This process can be long and expensive, so there are efforts to make it more efficient. One such initiative is called ACT-PD. For more information, see the link provided in the comments.